Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Welcome back to another 2023 MPB Team Preview. This is the last time I'll be saying that because we have reached the end. It's taken a long time, but today will finally be the last preview and I'll be able to focus on some other content in the coming weeks at long last. But last but not least, it's the Hiroshima Toyo Carp. This is a team that not too long ago dominated the Central League with three consecutive pennants in 2016, 17, and 18. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get that elusive Japan Series title. Really unlucky circumstances, you know, in 2016 they ran into Shohei Otani's Nippon Ham Fighters. The Carp were probably the best team in MPB that year, but the fighters were just destined to win it. 2017 was disappointing because they got upset by the Bay Stars in the playoffs. Uh, and then 2018, they, they made it back to the Japan Series, but had to go up against the juggernaut that was the SoftBank Hawks dynasty. So uh, they didn't have much of a chance there, and they just haven't finished in the top half of the standings since then. In 2022, they had a 66-74-3 record. Uh, that was fifth in the league. They had a 96 WRC+, plus, which was actually good for second. And they had a 105 FIP-, minus, which was fourth best. Uh, you know, expectations were not particularly high for them before the season, so the fact that they were semi-competitive after losing Superstar Seiya Suzuki was a positive takeaway. Um, but this is a group that is still sort of in a transition period. They didn't do much in the offseason. Um, I think they were the least active team of all. All they did was sign third baseman Matt Davidson. Uh, and granted, he's, he's a really solid player. But I don't think he really moves the goalpost much. Uh, they did, however, sign Shogo Akiyama last summer. So I suppose you can kind of count that towards their additions as well. Because this will be Akiyama's first full season in Hiroshima. Now, going over to that rotation, you got Masato Marishita, 25-year-old ace who won the CL Rookie of the Year in 2020. Immediately establishing himself as one of the best arms in Japan. But the past two years have been a bit have been a bit of a step in the wrong direction. I mean, 2022 was better than 2021 in terms of uh, the underlying numbers, but his ERA still went up. Um, and he had to get elbow surgery over the offseason. So a couple of years ago, you would have thought that Marishita was basically a lock for Samurai Japan's WBC roster. But things haven't gone exactly as planned. Uh, and then you have two veterans in Daichi Osera and Aaron Curry. Uh, they've been with the Carp through their best days and their worst days. No shortage of experience and, and still very solid pitchers, uh, but certainly not in their prime years anymore. Hiroki Takoda, a southpaw, was an all-star last year, was really having a great season until he suffered a, a big leg injury in August. Atsushi Endo is only 23 years old, so he's got some upside for sure. Shogo Tamamura is another youngster that has potential. He's only 21. Uh, and Drew Anderson had a mediocre debut year in Japan, but he's not bad. So I'm glad they brought him back. Uh, overall, I would say, though, that Hiroshima's rotation is pretty mid. You know, Marishita is a true ace when he's at his best, uh, and, he, and he can go really deep into games. Osira and Curry can eat a lot of innings. Takoda is coming off a breakout season, but also coming off an injury. Uh, and then Endo, Tamamura, Anderson, those guys are, are question marks. Uh, not too sure what to expect. So the pieces are there for an average to above average rotation, but if Marishta isn't himself and the veterans, you know, keep regressing, then it's not going to be very pretty. Uh, the bullpen kind of in a similar spot. Roji Kuribayashi is an absolute stud, you know, uh, sub one ERA in his rookie year, ERA in the low ones um, in, in his sophomore year as well. Insanely high strikeout rate, probably the best relief pitcher in Japan right now outside of Levon Moinello. Uh, and then Daisuke Moriura and Takuya Yasaki were good last year. Kemna and Matsumoto are, are okay, but you know, um, they just don't have many guys with plus plus stuff apart from the closer. Um, now, one guy in the staff that I'm eager to watch is Makoto Adua. He's a half Nigerian pitcher that had a promising start to his career, uh, but injuries and bad form have kept him off of, the, off of the top team for the past four years. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of role he has on this team in 2023. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm not especially impressed with the pen. Kuribayashi is elite, uh, but then other than him, it's probably below average. 
The lineup, on the other hand, is actually fairly solid. You know, they're still recovering from the loss of Suzuki two years ago, but there's a lot of dudes here that can hit. Um, they didn't hit for much power last year, but they did score runs with singles and doubles. Shogo Sakakura at catcher has the ability to become the face of this franchise. He's a great pure hitter, you know, bats for a high average, uh, has some pop, and doesn't strike out very often. Now, his de de defense behind the plate is another story. He still needs to work on it, uh, and he did lose a year of development there in 2022 because he temporarily converted to a third baseman, but no doubt that Sakakura could be one of the two or three best catchers in MPB by year's end. Uh, they brought back first baseman Ryan McBroom, one of the more successful foreign imports in Japan last year, uh, he should, and he should be able to build on that success because I really, really like his approach. Disciplined, takes his walks, you know, contributes in more ways than just the long ball. Second base is still Rosuke Kikuchi. Uh, he's won 10 consecutive Golden Gloves. Uh, now, you know, we can have a conversation about how many of those he actually deserved. I would say maybe like half, but, you know, obviously he is an excellent defender regardless. Um, and he isn't a total dud at the plate. Um, 2022 was not a great year offensively for him, but he hit a career high in home runs the year before that, so... You know, he still does have low double-digit home run potential. Third base is Matt Davidson, 32 years old, so slightly on the older end, but does have power. 32 bombs in AAA last year, uh, though that is the Pacific Coast League, where the balls are, you know, about as juiced as you can get. Um, so we'll see if he can translate it to the MPB level. Um, when I'm recording this, he has uh, three home runs already, so doing pretty good. Um, and he did have back-to-back 20-plus -back homer seasons on the south side of Chicago in 2017 and 18. Then you get to Kaito Kozono at shortstop. Relative to his age, he's had a solid couple of years to, to start his career, but needs to improve the defense. Uh, and he needs to be more patient because a 300 OBP and a sub-5% walk rate just isn't going to cut it. Still in his early 20s though, so has plenty of time to grow and uh, improve. You know, if he can get that weighted runs graded plus above league average, then that would be a great success. Um, the infield overall does have good pieces, especially with Sakakura and McBroom being fairly reliable. Um, but then it's going to come down to how much they can get from the likes of Davidson and Kozono. Now, the outfield is actually quite strong. Roman Ishikawa in left, uh, if you watched my top five right now discussion episode with Gaijin Baseball, this offseason, you know that we both think Nishikawa is terribly underrated. Uh, he's a top two or three player at his position, and he was quietly a top 10 hitter in MPB last season when he played, keywords when he played, because he didn't miss quite a bit of time, uh, and that's always been a problem for him. But when he's on the field, he is an elite contact hitter, uh, and he's got 15 to 20 home run upside too. Takayoshi Noma hit over 300 last season in a decent sample size. You know, I don't expect him to sustain that in any way, but you can't deny that he did put up good numbers in 2022. Uh, and then Shogo Akiyama, turning 35 this month and only played in 44 games last season because he joined midway through and then got hurt towards the end. But in that small sample size, he was quite good. Slugged over 400 with a WRC plus hovering around 115. Obviously, that's not, you know, on the level of his Cebu Lions days when he was consistently topping the leaderboard in hits and famously set the single season record back in 2015. Um, so, you know, the question is, is he going to get worse in 2023? Is he going to, you know, uh, be about the same? Is he going to improve after readjusting to, uh, M to MPB? That is, that's what we don't know because his MLB career did not go as he had hoped, um, obviously, but that doesn't mean that he can't perform in MPB. Uh, and in fact, I still think Akiyama can be a, a top outfielder in the league because you can't bet against the track record. So it's tough to kind of gauge where he's at in his career because of those bad two years, two and a half years, I guess, he had in, in the U.S. Um, and obviously he's not going to post a 400 on base percentage again, but I think he can still be a productive hitter. Maybe hit 280, 350 on base, 130 WRC plus, 15 homers in the middle of that lineup. That'd be really good. Um, so the Carp are an interesting mix of youngsters and veterans. You know, you have a nice young core with Morishita and Sakakura and, and Nakamura and Kuribayashi. You have some well-tenured players like Osera and Curry and Kikuchi and Akiyama. Uh, and then you have a whole bunch of unknowns in between, like Davidson. Uh, and it's going to come down to how much those guys can, can mesh. Um, 
and that's going to determine their fate for the 2023 season. Most people, myself included, uh, do not really think they can be uh, competing with the top, you know, the, the, the top half teams. So, you know, I, I think they're going to finish in last place. Just not enough depth, especially on the pitching side. Um, but they're not an awful team by any means. And, you know, if everything breaks their way, it's not impossible that they make the playoffs. I personally think they're not quite there yet, and uh, we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.